So look what Christian got me for Christmas. A winch. The top is going to get cut. <gasps> oh my god. This is really German precision engineering. I eyeballed it out of two directions. Oh my god. Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we show you how to manufacture a winch mount bracket and mount a hidden winch below the bumper in your Land Rover Discovery 3. Hope you enjoy the video. I hope so. In this episode, we're gonna manufacture the entire mounting bracket, cut the bumper, attach the winch, and install it in the Land Rover. But of course, not in our mall brawler. So I'm back behind the camera where yes. I belong. The bracket I made here is made out of quarter inch steel and it has a two inch thick wall tubing. I'm gonna show you how to weld up this winch mount bracket made out of laser cut pieces based on a DXF drawing. You can get these pieces cut anywhere on the planet for about $100. You weld it up, you install your winch and cut your bumper and get it into your Land Rover Discovery 3. One big advantage of this design is that it also mounts the winch controller right next to the winch with the original cable so you don't have to relocate the winch controller up underneath the hood. It gets you to use a very low cost winch. This is a 370 euro raw machine. With a steel cable. For the one time we winch in 10 years, we don't need a synthetic rope. Yeah. I got a relocation bracket mounted for the valve of the air suspension. There is a reinforcement gusset, which mounts to the front tow loop of the Discovery 3. Here you got the original bumper from the Land Rover Discovery 3. All you gotta do is cut it out in this area and bolt it right back in place where it was. Yep. We, most likely one modification you need to do to your winch is to build a different kind of an actuation for the winch clutch. I did this by installing a hex head bolt into the winch clutch actuator and I can get to it from the top with an Allen wrench right here at this spot. <laughs> on course, my Discovery Suite. Yes, of course not on the mall crawler. Oh my God. Your wish. The it's, mall crawler is not going to Oh, work. my car is going to have a red cable like everyone else's car. Oh, this we can't use. Oh, but it looks certainly nice. The cheapest winch on the planet, but it looks beefy. That's why it's cheap, it's heavy. So it's 12,000 pounds. It's whatever it says on here. Yeah, so the 12,000. Minus the Chinese factor. Which is about a thousand. <laughs> it looks good for 379 euros. But yeah. it looks like it doesn't fit. It it's fits. really big. I, I measured it. It fits. I'm fixing the brackets which I screwed up in my engineering. He screwed up the whole pattern on his design. Those two fit. Well, but those two, they don't fit. <laughs> Thank God we have machines. It doesn't look that bad. Those two fit. And those two are off by three millimeters. Thank God he knows how to do that and is and able to. Use the word screw up a little less. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's pretty good that the whole pattern fits on two bolts. Yeah, quite. And I blame it on the cheap Chinese winch and not on your yeah. information. I used to have this one with like, you know, bracket attached to it. Yeah, I know where that is. Yes, you know where yes, I know where that is because I saw it recently and I... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's in the wrong drawer. I didn't drawer. put it there. Now, fix... Good. That's a really that's beefy, end a beefy end mill. That's a tiny end mill. Yeah? Oh, God. Cutting we... edge engineering uses beefy end mills. <laughs> in there like this. And wait, can, wait, oh, wait for me. And I can weld them, yeah? Yeah, okay. So it's like a puzzle. I want this thing to be easy to duplicate for everybody. So the pieces need to be cut ahead of time and I forgot in my design 
these two cutouts. Yeah. I want to say you can get these lasered out for about a hundred dollars everywhere on the planet. We paid 142 euros. Yeah, because I wanted them next day. All you gotta do is take these pieces and puzzle them now together with these brackets. See? Yep. This piece, for example. And nobody can bend this kind of steel at home, so that's why I made them in a way yep. where it's really easy to assemble. But we also need this tubing in between, and I couldn't get that one, so we have to look in our storage department. Oh. See, did you put my drawing here somewhere? 677. We need thick wall, two inch tubing. Two inch is like five centimeters. Or 50 millimeters. Yesterday he said, wow. Thick wall tubing here. See that? Oh, yeah. And it's 40. So you have to change your design. Oh my god. What? Ah. Don't hurt your back again. Ah. You forgot that you had that. Probably. Shit. This is the right stuff. 55. That's too big. We're gonna cut this open and weld it back closed. What? Oh my god. <coughs> There's my bird feet. I'm gonna feed the bird. Birds now. So this is exactly the right stuff. Yeah, beefy stuff. You didn't pay attention. Yes, I did. You don't pay attention when you put your stuff somewhere and then you forget where you put it. Let's see if my bandsaw is able to cut this stuff. Yeah. Oh my god. And he's wondering why the saw blade is cutting crooked. I have to cut a one inch piece and then later on weld it back together. Smart engineering. Forty five degree chamfer, thirty to forty five degree, and at least two thirds of the depth on both sides. You gotta clean it up here. Yeah. It's a small crawler's battery. Do I want to know what you are up to? Well, we want to test this thing. So, most important instructions. I don't need any instructions. Yeah. So, we actually have to tolerate the noise because Robin is working on our project. Ah! Help! Okay, so that works. What? Oh my god. Perfect. I got Robin welding up this tubing what I cut. This way, you know, I don't have to do the work, he's doing the work. He started now his education as a metal fabricator and a blacksmith. So he's home for Christmas and he can do the welding for me. Okay, I gotta say, this looks like an extremely good weld. the hell is this? Oh wow, look at that, an old hat. So unfortunately our gas is empty. Vera has to go and get some more gas. That's one big beat. Take a new one. Perfect. That's a thick wall tubing. It's really heavy. 
And is it to spec? It's a little bit over two inch. It's um, actually 55 millimeter. Yeah, but that's your fault because you measured and cut. And remember, it's behind my yeah, bumper. Is, this is All it takes to build this winch bracket is an angle grinder. Where my crib land. So, oh, it's heavy. So now where do you brush it? You can't just leave, they have to talk to me. So, that's your first one. Yes, very well. Okay, that's the next one. This goes together like this. Okay. okay. to cut that off here. Very nice. So Christian, actually we don't need you anymore. So what most important work are you doing? I'm aligning the next piece so that he can weld it. That's how it's supposed to look nice. And it's all done. We have only four more pieces left out. Oh, no, no, five, we got, six. We got, we got plenty of pieces. Oh, so, oh, so there are a lot of gussets. So here, when you weld the winch bracket uh, to the cross member, you gotta spare out these holes. I lasered in holes here, especially so you know not to weld across. The reason they are there is that you don't put a big bead across here and get interference with that bolt head. That's how smart that design is. Take this here, 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 and here, and then give it some real beat. Yeah. A beefy beat. Okay, I'm a little frustrated. Cause see here, this is the weld I did. Yeah. That's the weld Robin did. <laughs> My weld, <laughs> Robin's weld. <laughs> we can now set a clamp right here. And it's gonna be nice and straight. Sitting nice and straight here. Yeah. And it's raised up. You make sure it's not sitting on the weld bead. Yeah. And this piece got to go in there like this. Oh yeah. my god, how are you going to do that? See how the bottom is supposed to be flush? So this is supposed to be flush, which it is not. Okay, he's at 88. I'm gonna clamp it. Let me verify it one more time. Good? Yeah. 880. Are you sure you're on the right side yeah, now? Yeah, I'm on the right side. <laughs> now. Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering always cleans his weld beads in between. In between what? In between doing additional weld beads. So he's getting ready to paint. That's all what I'm still good for. <laughs> I designed in a whole bunch of gussets and now I don't remember where they all go. Don't you have a drawing? Yes. Good. Yes, exactly. This is what the bracket looks like. Still a few welds missing. But we're gonna put the winch in there now. That's looking pretty good, I think. The first thing we do is we disable the air suspension. Take the air suspension fuse out. So it's 8 o'clock and we are already working on our car.
Yeah, so first thing we got to do is take the bumper off, which is really easy on a Discovery. Most important thing is you don't forget those two screws here in the side under the headlights. Yep. They mount the wheel arches here. The target is to get the wheel arches off. Yeah. Without breaking any clips. Yeah. That's a plan as of 8 o'clock yeah. on a Wednesday morning. So these two clips got to come out. Yep. See how easy they come out if you got the right tool. Yep. I gotta lift it up so it comes out, okay? Maybe I should clean them, they are also all muddy. My whatever you call it from the airbox uh, fell down. Can I flip it? Careful. Oh my god. And here in the front, I gotta lift it up. The recovery loop on a Discovery 3 is under this piece of sheet metal here in the front. We have to get new clips, but they are so expensive. Uh -huh. I have to see. It's the recovery loop rated for the full vehicle weight, and it's below this plastic. I think I wrecked it. No, don't. But oh my god. And these also. Oh, it's coming. When I take the bumper off now, I got two connectors over here and I got a water hose in here. <gasps> oh, yeah, so what? Fabian's has park assist, we don't have that. See, this is the connector for the park assist, which is not used. 16 years old. What I did is I used them a little bit. Now I snap back in here. <laughs> Oh my god. See, now there is a water hose connected right here. For my dishwasher. Yeah. So. It's not gonna leak much. So, hold it. Better do it this way before we break something, you know. Yeah. Now we gotta take this stuff out here and the bumper is gonna get cut. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, every German is gonna go, Oh, the bumper is all cut. <laughs> what is the TÜV going to say? I temporarily unlock the valve pack here. Just pull it up and forward. Now it's dangling here. And on the other side, we gotta get the water tank most likely out. Ah, now it's coming. Okay. Here are two more screws. It's quite a lot of tension on here. Wow. Yeah, it is. And this piece here is it's exactly like... where the winch is gonna go. I forgot the guy. So this piece we try to put back in later on. Let's see, this is now the temperature sensor off. Okay. Oh, they didn't break. Yet. Yeah. This is going to take a while. We have to remember this one. Yeah. So taking the cooling fan out is a left hand thread. It's usually stuck pretty good. So I got a special key here what I made. So taking this thing out. Oh my god. To take this plastic piece out. Just for a tiny little screw to remove a plastic piece. Wait, I, I want to stick something in my intake here. I will. You know, because if you lose half a dozen bolts in your intake, you miss those bolts somewhere else. That's a problem. So I got here a piece of plastic. Yeah, I'm... now I can get to it. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a major debate. I mean, we've been at it for an hour now. For Just hour. that tiny little bolt. We didn't break anything. Yet. We have Yet. such a winch modification done in a workshop. I can guarantee you it's all high quality and they will spend all this time 
getting this bolt carefully out. Oh my god, oh my god, what oh my god. <laughs> what a stupid bolt. With this bolt out, I can remove this piece without breaking anything. At least that's what my plan was. See, I can maneuver it out. There's the temperature sensor. I can cut it nicely to shape and my temperature sensor will still have a mount and everything. 16 dirt. years of dirt. Oh, I hope there's no mice crap. No, why would there be mice crap? This is typically rubbing through right here on this corner. Wait a second, I don't do right? a job. And then you have an air leak. It's now what wet. we're gonna have to do is drill open these holes. Why? Because they too wimpy for a winch. They only oh M8s. My God. We're gonna mount the winch bracket now temporarily. These plastic pieces, which are not used, only this one, this one, and this one is used, they hit right here. Oh no. Okay, so we're gonna cut them off. Now the next step is to put it back on, see where it's now hitting. Now we gotta cut this one off. Yeah, that's Just do it like in a dirty way. Yours is it too? No. It says here now, raw machine. So just a minor cut. Right here. Oh my god. No. Yeah. See, I got these pieces, and this is supposed to tie it here to this front toe point. So this is the only spot we gotta actually check on the vehicle, mark it, and then weld it afterwards because the tolerances are just very high in this area and on most discoveries this lower beam is bent because people use that to raise the vehicle and then it bends so here i install the brackets and now you can see that this is in an angle and now i gotta set up this angle and mark the piece and weld it in the workshop there and there and i got this angle here on my angle takeover tool yeah. It would also be possible to just weld it in according to my drawing and then pound on it with a big hammer. So we gotta open up these holes to M10, basically drilling 10.5 millimeters through. Any residential home in Germany has 230 volts AC power, there is no 120, and any outlet you can draw up to 16 amps, some of those even 20 amps, which gives us twice the power than what you guys in the US have out of your 120 outlets. In addition, every home in Germany has three-phase power. So we got three times 400 volt AC, 50 hertz, and in newer homes, you have about a 80 amp drop in my home here. I got a 180 amp drop. This is industrial grade So we needed eight bolts This is what I ended up with <laughs> you know, you can't have enough bolts at home Gonna drill the hole to access the winch clutch. On. Is it so? This is perfect. Oh boy, what did you do? Okay. This is really German precision engineering. I eyeballed it out of two directions. Okay. Oh my god. Yes, oh, here's the hole. Yeah. So now, see, I can stick now an Allen wrench through here all the way to the winch on the bottom. And now I can build a little lever which I flip here from side to side to actuate the clutch without having to take the grill off. Feel the hole from the winch mount 
I can feel my finger over here. Precision German engineering. If I can stick this now in here. Ah, no, no. But you missed it. I missed it. Oh my God. No, I think I'm too far over. I want to say I got it real right here. So you yeah, put it in your finger. Yeah, now I'm through. And 10 inch is here. Everybody realize I'm using inch dimension for our inch viewers. About 28. See this distance here? Yeah. This is what it's off. Oh boy. So, but this is garbage. And this can go back in. It would not be German precision engineering. Yeah. If you would just all leave this out. Yeah. It should fit now back on. Like this. And like this. Oh my god, I have to See? sneeze. So I gave these pieces all a good coat of primer. And all I gotta do is spray paint them black. This is ready for the final paint job. So today is December 31st. And can you believe the sun's out? <sighs> So, final assembly. Special made detail, I'll show it to you in a minute. So we're gonna have to glue in this bolt with high strength Loctite. So it's never gonna come out again. Ever. Because this is what we use to actuate the winch. Cool. So now we need to mount this O-ring. Oh, are you gonna get that? Oh, okay. There. And then we should be able to actuate the winch using this key through the bumper. So we replace this detail with my mate detail. And Christian is rigging up my so. winch. Yes, I'm basically done. Look at that. Oh. We don't need this. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Then this goes into your cut off pieces box. If you want to ever glue it back together. No, I don't. So you can get to the turf. Oh my god. This is good enough. For now? Really? Yes, yeah. because we're gonna have to get the winch on here first. Yeah. I, Most important I part. Have to lift the winch in while everything is in this position. This way I can get it in. So there's one. There. And now I can hang the winch bracket on here. It's in. And I can turn this and it's out. And it and I can even feel it snap in. Yeah. 
and anybody else would just cut the original one off and be done with it in half an hour. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. I had to make this piece. And the reason is because I bought a four-jaw chuck for my lathe and I never used it. And this way, I had to make something with an extender on it. You know, and that's why I wanted to use it. I opened up all these mounts to M10. Yeah. If you would use high strength bolts, so 12.8 or 10.9 instead of 8.8, .8. you could leave the original M8s in there. The reason is that they have a really beefy nut behind them. Okay, this is the one I drilled out. Yeah. This is a this is a good size nut and it's probably good quality too. So I'm pretty sure you have eight M8 bolts in high strengths going into these nuts. I thought this is just some stupid sheet metal nut on the other side, but it isn't. It's a really high quality nut. So my recommendation would be if you install a winch like this and you use the front recovery point, you can leave these in and use high grade um, steel bolts. And that makes it a lot easier to install this thing because you don't have to fumble the screws in from behind like I'm doing now. Yeah, because it makes everything difficult. So you got them coated in copper paste for I them. coat everything in copper paste. Yeah, yep. that's good. That I, is one beefy bolt. Yeah, that's the bolt I bought for your recovery point. This piece needs to be replaced. It needs to have only a hole and not a slot. And I got this bracket made with welded in nuts, so it's easy to mount. And it goes right in between here to get fastened down here. In order to still use your recovery point, you insert this piece, which is only a temporary one. I'm gonna change my design. So this piece only has a 17 millimeter hole. This way, the, the screw is not gonna slip forward. This is German screwed up engineering and we're gonna make that German perfect engine. We're gonna make an additional plate, which I don't have finished right now, which is bigger than this. And it goes on here and it gives you an additional loop here in the front with a hole in it. And you can still use that. We're gonna, make that. we're gonna make that out of a 12 millimeter steel plate. These two pieces are only temporary. Yeah. And in my design, I'm gonna fix that. You got it now because you were complaining every night about your recovery point? Yeah, <laughs> I'm really worried about my... So he found a way. Perfect. I and think we also, should use more than 45. So M12 is 80 Newton meters. So this one, I got a nice mounting bracket made. And I got this spot figured out perfectly here. So that you can use the original cable which came with the winch. Yep. So, click. <laughs> click. <laughs> Got all wires connected here on the back side of the winch. This is not easy to get to because it's blind, but all I gotta do now is torque them. Click, click. I gotta make sure I'm not missing one. I got a temporary connection. Watch it, and I got it unlatched. So it works. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can get to the connector here through that hole if you ever need to. I yeah. can here reach through the hole from the headlight. And I can get that connector in and out. So there is the front control valve, which I relocated a little bit downwards. And all I gotta do is plug it in here. That's it. Yeah? Plug and play. So, all wired up. No, let me show them. Yeah. This all is your nice wiring. You know? Uh, relocation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make them put the tie rack on this valve. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it drifted away big time. Every American knows how to use a step drill because you can build entire motorcycles with it. Anybody who watched Oakland County Choppers knows that. <laughs> Good enough. There are now two major holes in my bumper. All kinds of stuff. Oh, so on these these two bars we use to connect later on 
the winch opening. I don't know what that thing is called, okay? So we put these on and we gotta adjust this distance. It will be too big, of course. Uh. Okay, water is in. So, bumper is on. The fan. Doesn't need to be very tight. Like this. That's Toyota easy. <laughs> so, we're doing the final wiring. I'm an electrician by trade. <laughs> so. We're gonna have to think about what we do with this switch. For right now, we'll leave it like this. Yeah. This is enabling the winch. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna drive to the TÜV like this. <laughs> Look at that. Christian is by trade an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> we will fix that. But it's New Year's Eve and almost dark, and Unless... I'm done because okay. it's Friday, and you want a video on Sunday. Yeah, we're gonna run out of time here really soon. So I started this piece, what goes on here, but I couldn't finish it because my stock was a little narrow. So I have to get me a bigger piece of stock and we'll put this in the ending of some other video. Yeah. And for now, the bumper is going to get a little bit bruised up. Yeah. And later on, I want to put it on a hinge and a magnet. So I go like, tick. there it is. And yeah. when I go to the TÜV, I go, Poop. Yeah. and when they ask, what is this? I say, oh, that's a that's a sewing machine. We we need that once in a while. So I can look through this gap and see the road. But the problem is, we don't have anywhere to fasten this thing now. Everybody can see. Oh. So that's it for this video. We got our winch installed. The drawings and the manufacturing cut profile, what you need to get these pieces laser cut, you can get sent to you from Vera. If you write her an email, she's going to send you back these files. And we appreciate if you make a donation to our PayPal account. You don't have to, it's up to you. You find our PayPal account in the about page of our YouTube channel. Now, it's going to cost you about $120 to get all these pieces cut. Don't have them cut out of the completely mild steel. Use one great better steel. I used what used to be called ST50. That's the little bit of a better steel. But just ask your steel supplier that you don't get mild steel. And quarter inch plating is good enough. What we got left to do here is we have to make this cover piece and put this on. This is a 25.4 centimeter distance, so exactly 10 inches. They make these in 10 inches and then they fit on here. Um, we're gonna make the license plate with a hinge and a magnet so it folds down and folds back up. This is for us the easiest method. And I probably put like a large plastic around it so it's all even. If um, we hit something that these pieces and this doesn't puncture through the license plate, the TÜV doesn't like that. The TÜV wants to have nothing sticking out in the front of a vehicle. Hopefully there will be many people duplicating this winch mount bracket and installing this winch. It does not make much sense that I link this winch in the YouTube video because they are all different. I'm gonna write down the brand and stuff and then you can look for it on Harbor Freight or Costco or wherever you buy cheap winches, <laughs> wherever you are on the planet. What's that store called in Australia? I don't know. We still got some more finalized wiring to do here and we gotta place the switch somewhere. We wanna have it so you open the hood when, you, when we need the winch. I think we're gonna need it about once per year max and then we are cured. I do have a fuse here installed for the winch controller. And this thing we're gonna hide inside the vehicle here up front. Yeah. So when I plug this in now, I gotta make sure that switch is off. 
so yep. we don't accidentally actuate this and we don't want to have that cable going into our cooling fan yeah oh my god yeah, yeah that's a wrap this job excluding the design work was a three-day job Robin did all the welding for me and I could prep the pieces, grind them and chamfer them and deburr them and he did a full day of welding. We ran out of gas, we ran out of wire and then it was half a day of paint and finish and one and a half days of assembly and putting it into the vehicle. So in total about three days that's what it took and we made a video next to it. So I think if you are somewhat of a decent welder and you're not doing this for the first time and you have these pieces pre-cut and get the 50 by 50 thick wall tubing, I think it's actually a two-day job if you get the right winch. Yeah. And I also modified our winch, which was another three hours in <laughs> those three days. It's There's gonna, a lever missing. There's going to be a lever coming out here yeah. and I can flip that lever around here yeah. from side to side. So we still got to do that. Yeah, now we're going to go on a test drive. And... We'll see you next Sunday. Oh, it's bright in here. So, just like everybody else, we gotta fix our house once the car is not broken. <laughs> right. Yeah.